Ah, the quadcopter drone, one of the most interesting and I'll admit at times most annoying inventions of the last 10 years. However, its usefulness and versatility have made it so that on nearly every photography outing I go on now, I find room for one in my camera bag. But unfortunately, not all drone cameras are made the same. If you want to take beautiful shots of cities or mountains where you've got shadows and lights right next to each other and you want to pull out all of that detail and contrasting punchiness, you're going to need a drone with a high quality sensor. But unfortunately, that can get a little expensive. You're looking into, you know, usually the $500 to $1,000 to $1,500 range for those type of drones. But if you happen to have an entry level drone, a hobbyist drone, or even an FPV first person view drone that you want to start getting into aerial photography with, then the style I'm going to show you today is a great place to start because it doesn't necessarily rely on the quality of your sensor. What we're going to do is do a straight down pattern image. So what that means is we're going to fly out and you look down and you look for contrasty subjects, something with different materials, different colors, different uh, lines. Good examples are, you know, brown bushes over here and maybe a green tree over here. And I usually like to find a river or a path or something to run down the middle. And so that's why I'm out here near this creek. There's actually a bridge way out there, if you can see it, that I think flying out there and looking straight down on is going to make for an excellent picture. Other nice subjects are train tracks or bike trails. Always make sure you follow your local laws and respect people's privacy though. Now this is the DJI Mavic Mini 2, and it's by no means a slouch when it comes to the camera department, but it's also one of the least expensive drones that DJI sells. And so that's why I've chosen to use it today, just to show you as close as I can that it's not all about the resolution or the image quality, the sensor quality, it's about the patterns and shapes that you can get. So I'm gonna get my drone set up here and we'll fly out there and I'll kinda of show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can see uh, that we are ready to go. Just hold it out here, take off permitted. So let's just get out there, find that bridge. But you can see now, I'm gonna to have to go up higher in order to get the shot that I'm looking for. I'm going to maintain under the 400 foot regulation, which is the law in this zone. You can see as I go up higher here, that this type of photograph makes for a wonderful wallpaper on your phone or your desktop, or you can even print them out on metal portraits so you get the nice punchiness between the darks and lights that uh, kind of HDR look that metal can give you. So I'm gonna tilt the camera straight down. And to line up my shot how I want to frame it. I do like that having the river go from the bottom left to the top right. Switch over to my camera mode. Of course you see I get a little bit more because I'm not in a 16 by 9 crop. I'll kind of go left to right and we'll just go ahead and take the picture. And you can see this is kind of a dull image in the fact that it's just green on green. Uh, normally I like to find things like a marsh where you have some dead brown bushes along with green over here and maybe even a, a creek with some water lines in it. We'll see if we can find something else, but uh, this is going to be an interesting shot when it gets edited down. It never hurts to spin around and see if there's something else you can do. But again, I'm not so concerned about the detail and quality that we're picking up. I'm concerned with having a punchy, contrasty look, an abstract image. Other interesting times to do this is when there's snow on the ground, maybe one side is melted, one side isn't. Again, you got lights and darks, punchy, contrasty, really interesting. Bends and creeks are always a nice spot because you get the water paths and the banks that have eroded a little bit. Uh, but I do recommend staying away from rivers because you can't fly high enough to see both banks usually. So I try, to stay near creeks and I get better results from that. Ooh, I really like that with the you know, dead bank area on the left and then the green on the right. Something kind of like that right there. So you get it, that's the style we're looking for. 
I'm going to take these home and edit them and we'll look at the results as well as some of the other ones I've shot in the past. I've come home and edited those photos in Lightroom already. I'm not going to go over how I edited them specifically because that's not the point of this video. The point is to just show you what's possible with this technique. But when you are editing them, you can go a little heavy on some of the settings I would normally say use a light touch on, such as contrast, texture, clarity, vibrance, and saturation. This, you really wanna bring out those sharpness and boldness to help drive the mind's ability away from being able to discern what it's looking at. In most normal landscape photos and stuff, I'd say go easy on those, but this you can kind of tweak it up a little bit. So I am going to pull up the images here on my iPad, and that's what I'm going to be looking down at here as we go over these. This is the first one here, unedited, directly out of the camera. And you can see this is the one that I went to with the river, bottom left to top right. I do like that. The bridge looks pretty cool. But the one thing I don't like is the fact that I took this in the late evening is about 6 30 p.m sun was pretty low in the sky and you can see all of those shadows there now when you're doing this i've found i get the best results when the sun is directly overhead or it's an overcast sky so you get a smooth even lighting because that's going to help break up the again the mind's ability to figure out what it's looking at here with shadows especially like up here, the brain says, oh, that's a tree I'm looking down at from the top. And it gives context clues to what we're looking at. And really we want to be as abstract as we can. There's also not a whole lot of contrast with the trees and stuff like that. And what I ended up doing was going pretty bold and just removing all the green because that's all there was. And then I allowed the red to really show through. And that kind of helped break up the... Uh, monotony of the image, your eyes really focus on the red spots and the rest kind of just blurs into a background static. And so it's made this image work. I'll admit that these two images I shot for this video with you are not my favorite of the style that I've done, but uh, we make it work with what we have. So here's this final image and you know, I do like the way it looks. Now that I've edited it, but I've had to go pretty extreme on how I did it. So let's take a look at the next one, which was the river bend. And this one does have a little more potential because it has the big dirt bank on the top left. I always like to have something breaking up the image, a path, a river, like I said. And so we have that. But again, the thing I really don't like is the shadows right there in the middle. It gives the eye too much information. But what I end up doing is really playing into that by making the darks and lights more extreme. I really pump that saturation. And um, you can definitely tell what you're looking at, but I think it uh, still looks pretty good. If we were to print this out on a nice luster paper, those darks and lights would give a lot of nice contrast. But now let me show you some of my favorites I've done in the past, show you what's possible with this. So this one here I love. Uh, I use this one as my background on my phone quite a bit. The turquoise of the river is just really beautiful. I shot this on an overcast day, so you can see there's hardly any shadows. And yes, you can tell what you're looking at, but just the, the smoothness, the evenness, and that turquoise river, it's just it, it's undistracting when it's in the background of your apps and things like that while still being beautiful. This one here I actually shot on the same day as the video that we just did. I was out to trying some things out, trying to get some stuff for the video, and I ended up really liking this. This is a lake. I found this wind break, wave break, whatever you want to call it, that formed a Y. And what I love about this image is the fact that you have three different types of water. On the top right, you can see that that's the windy side and so we have waves and the winds coming down from that direction and then on this top left side this probably doesn't have very much inflow and outflow of water and so it's allowed the marine plants to grow and really show up there and so it gives it a different color compared to the other two parts of the water and then of course down the bottom we're on the leeward side is that the word <laughs> the side that doesn't the wind isn't blowing on right now and so we have smooth water. And so by doing this, having it divided into three triangles, I really like 
the finished product. And you also have a little boat down here and that's always something interesting. I did not fly over them just off to the side and wasn't there long enough to bother their fishing. Uh, now we're into a set of three that I really love and printed out on metal. These look great. Uh, again, it was an overcast day, obviously in January, a little bit of snow there. And we have that nice turquoisey blue water that I really like. So uh, here's one. The whites, the darks, looks great on a metal luster printout. And then here I decided to split it up and down because on the one side there's no snow and on the other side there is snow. So it's just a nice juxtaposition of what we're looking at. These also make great wallpapers on your computer. And this one normally I have it vertical uh, with the trees that are pointing to the right. I have them pointing up, but so you could see it better, I rotated it. But uh, again, the same type of thing, same area. No snow on the bottom, snow on the top. And I just really like the smoothness of these. This one here, uh, there is a lot of green, but I like the way the river, the creek, almost looks like someone took a paintbrush and dipped it in blue paint and then dipped it a little bit in white paint and smeared it because there's just this nice, it almost, I, I did leave some grain in the image to help give it some character, but it's almost like maybe even someone took one of those sand things where you pour sand into a jar. You got some blue sand and some white sand sticking up closer to the glass. And so the creek on this is really nice. And the last one is a, a marsh. Um, this one didn't have very much green. This is close to what it looked like on that day. What I like is the spider webs of water pathways through here. Gives it like veins going into a, a system. Maybe we're zoomed in on a arm of some creature or something. And a nice blue over there on the right in the water. But that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And then if you want to see more photography tips and techniques, hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be releasing a lot more on this channel. Thanks.